Urban renewal was widespread in the United States throughout the 1950s and 60s, and Buffalo was no exception, with public housing happening everywhere. At the turn of the 20th century, Buffalo was the sixth biggest city in the United States. It was known as the City of Light, held an American Pan Exposition, and connected the New York City to the Midwest via the Great Lakes and Erie Canal. The Dante Place is a prime example of public housing projects in, across the United States. In 1959, the Dante projects were knocked down, which was all black, and turned into a middle-income apartment complex with other features. The African Americans who lived there, along with other areas, were displaced during this decade because of the city's effort to revitalize the city by knocking down neighborhoods and residents had to leave after being there for many years. On New Year's Day in 1937, there was an explosion in the Canal District which eventually led to the Dante Place being built in the surrounding area. In 1936, one of the residents of a tenement in the Dante Place lit a candle and went into the basement, causing a natural gas explosion that lifted the entire building off its foundations. Many people died, five exactly, bringing national attention to the slum areas, which spurred new legislation across the country, and especially in Buffalo. Buffalo Curry Express noted in October 1936 that this may have been the first slum clearance rehabilitation project in the United States. In the 13 block area, there had once been 1,500 residents and by 1936 there were only 124 remaining. The construction of a memorial auditorium in the surrounding area of the Dante Place made it a thriving area and where many attracted many visitors because of its Buffalo Sabres and Buffalo Braves basketball team. Additionally, events such as circuses, concerts, sports, and political events were held at the hall. At this point in time, most Italians were moved out of the area where it gave a chance for African Americans to move in. After World War II, the Buffalo Municipal Housing Authority began plans for low-income housing in the Dante Place District, despite local opposition. In 1948, 90 families were displaced by the state for construction of new housing, which began in 1950. The Dante Place projects were completed in 1952, and residents moved in during September of that year. The seven-story, 12-story, the seven 12-story buildings were the first permanent state-aided housing in the city of Buffalo and consisted of 600 units. Each building contains a mix of one, two, three, and four bedroom apartments. When the Dante Place project was in planning stages, Howard Kelly, the Municipal Housing Authority said, we hope that this is the first step of waterfront beautification program, which will continue through to Porter Avenue. By 1960, many of the tenants in the Dante Place project were displaced from condemned subsidized substandard housing on the Lower East Side of Buffalo, a historically black section of the city. The projects had become, again, considered to be a slum area. The Municipal Housing Authority was losing money due to the unfilled apartments. The authority responded by moving low-rent residents back to the Douglas Towers and the Ellicott Tambler Mall. Although conditions of the Dante Place were rough, people still felt like their rights had been taken from them by destroying the place. Residents of the former Dante Place were extremely angered by the decision to knock down the former apartments and from there, 
people rioted and protested, and in 1967, the race riots got really out of hand. After the construction of the Skyway in 1956, the Dante Place was a main target for revitalization and redevelopment. It was surrounded by water. We have Lake Erie to our west, Niagara Falls to the north, and Buffalo River meandering to the south. The settlement patterns in our community came up from the water. Well, Buffalo is one of the few cities that has a truly Baroque street system. In 1804, Joseph Ellicott came to town. Joseph Ellicott was the brother of Andrew Ellicott, who was on Pierre L'Enfant's team to design Washington, D.C. And a lot of elements of the plan of Washington, D.C. are visible in Buffalo a grid overlaid by a radial system of streets. The radial and grid street system gave us an incredibly elegant framework for developing our city. One of the really terrific things about radials is the way they shape the view. So when you're coming down Court Street from a Lafayette Square, you have what Ada Louise Hustable called the greatest urban vista in America. is perhaps the greatest landscape architect America has produced, designer of Central Park. The father of landscape architecture came to Buffalo with an invitation to put a park in the city, decided instead that the real thing to do is put the city in a park system. It was the first best design park system in America. That park and parkway system was built on the armature of the elegant radial street system. There's no main gate. There's, you come in from any direction. You can move through the parkways to other parks and have very different experiences in each one. Frederick Law Olmsted called Buffalo the best planned city in America, if not the world. The thing that makes that marginally credible is that he said it before he offered his park system. So, it was the best planned city in America before the park and parkway system, and he added value to that best plan. The parks, of course, are beautiful in and of themselves, but sometimes we forget how significant the parkways were and how they framed the city and how they reflect Olmsted's vision of a democratic city, an egalitarian approach where, you know, Anyone and everyone in Buffalo felt like they were royalty by virtue of being on these parkways. To those of us who live along some of these streets or who traverse them regularly, we get the idea today uh, of what Ellicott and Olmsted wanted you to feel. You're, you're an individual, but when you cross these great civic works, you're part of a much larger thing. You're part of a larger society. You're part of something that can only happen with the collective will, effort, aspirations of your fellow citizens. And to ride a bike, to walk your dog along Chapin Parkway is just tremendously uplifting. And in Buffalo, we get that by walking the dog. The radials and the water and the park system in the best planned city in America set the table for the best architecture in America. Buffalo, of course, has buildings by what are today seen as the three greatest American architects, Frank Lloyd Wright, H.H. H. Richardson, and Louis Sullivan. The grid overlaid with the radial streets provides you with these fantastic building sites that really attract great architects to do their best work. And that is all integrated within incredible, walkable, compact neighborhoods. So when you go down the streets of Buffalo, you're going to see, yeah, holy cow, there's a house by Frank Lloyd Wright, my gosh, but you're going to see lining the streets really wonderful and sometimes touching examples of craftsmanship. 
Buffalo, like, like so many cities, uh, made some tremendous mistakes starting around 1950. If we didn't actually have a highway built by Robert Moses through a city, we were inspired by a highway built by Robert Moses through a city. We brought Skajakwood Expressway directly through an Olmsted Park, Delaware Park. We rammed the Kensington Expressway down one of Olmsted's parkways, displacing it entirely, Humboldt Parkway. It's fascinating. There were photographs of these giant elm trees being sawed down, and the caption on the pictures wasn't tragedy on Humboldt Parkway, it was hallelujah, progress coming. They said, hey, this is progress. How is it progress? How do you just cut right through a neighborhood? And one side gets destroyed because of it, and the other side barely holds on. You, it'll make you cry. You'll say, well, what the world happened? Every public record shows us that there were public votes, there was public hearings, where people said, don't do this. This is going to really destroy neighborhoods. And they did it anyway. Is, is there the mistake of all mistakes, the mother of all mistakes? We built the expressway system that surrounds our city on the water. The 190 and the Skyway just cut Buffalo off from its waterfront. So those are huge mistakes. We're still suffering from those mistakes. We may have yet an opportunity to undo them. That's our task.